Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, it's me again. <clears throat> and yes, you'll notice that I'm wearing uh, sunglasses now because Corey Hart said it was a cool thing to do, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. You know, if he wears his sunglasses tonight, by God, I will do it too. And another reason why I do it too is because I can't I can't spend a lot of time staring at someone before my mind goes into the devious nature of trying to pick them apart and try and crack jokes on them. I don't know why, but that's another thing too. I think if you if you can't make fun of everyone. And I mean everyone. You shouldn't make fun of anybody. I laugh at handicapped people, fat people. You know, I, I do it all the time, and I don't know why. I just think it's funny. <clears throat> and I really do. Like, especially, you know, televangelists and, like, the extremely religious types. Like, they just make me laugh <laughs> all the time. Because they're like, God, with the power of Jesus, <laughs> I would praise me. You will walk today. And then they have some, you know, like... Some old decrepit bastard, like in a wheelchair, is like, oh, so Mason Mandela. And then he gets up and starts throwing around fucking like Einstein's theorems and shit. I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> ah, it's funny. But that's, that's another thing, too. Like, one of the biggest deceptions in mankind that's still, you know, here, you know, that, that went around was when, uh, when Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek. And I don't know if you knew that, <clears throat> even for the hardcore Christians and Catholics, but. Yeah, he did that to show the Romans who Jesus really was so they could get him. It's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I won't, I won't spend a lot of time ripping religion apart. I, I just, you know, if you have faith, that's cool. It's not one of my things. That's all. And, uh, you know, but that's, that's another thing that comes to me, too. I can't, I can't believe in religion really so much. Like, faith, I, you know, I get it. You know, but I'm not horrible. I'm not like a fucking prejudiced dick where I'm like, oh, you don't believe in this, you're a horrible person. Because I know people that do that, and it's horrible. It's like a shitty thing to do. Like, you, you can't expect everyone to do that. And I'm not going to try and relevate, you know, uh, Nazis to Catholics, but, you know, they're a little, getting a little nuts, but I'm not, it's not the same thing at all. But I heard somebody bring that up the other day. Oh, Catholics are like Nazis. No, I don't think so. But, you know. Whatever. And, but my, my personality is so desensitized when it comes to horrific events. I mean, and I've, I've looked up things like the World Trade Center jumpers and, you know, the chainsaw video with the Mexican, you know, cartel. And I mean, just my views on life. I, I don't know why I watch them, but I think it gives me a whole new value in life. And it shows me how short life is, you know, and, but yeah, my girlfriend can't, <laughs> can't watch shit like that. And, you know, my friends and stuff, a lot of them are like, why do you do that? But that's that's really why. I think it gives me a good foot in the door on reality and life at its best. Because shit can happen to you at any time. I mean, you could be laying in your house. You know, and even the Donnie Darko plot with the uh, engine coming down through his bedroom and killing you. Like, it, shit can happen. It happens all the time. You know, like weird, messed up things. And, you know, I just, I think that watching things like that does help me. And, you know, I don't try to affiliate much of it into my lifestyle, you know, well, not any content of the videos I'm talking about, like my desensitizing views, I guess. Which sounds shitty to say it like that, it does, but, you know, whatever. I mean, that's how it is. I mean, even when I was young, when I was a young kid, I mean, and I would, I would get cut or something, I mean, I would freak out, be like, no, am I going to die? Uh, and I grew up with, like, this horrible anxiety problem, horrible anxiety problem, bad, like, to the point where I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital sometimes. But watching these videos, you know, they helped in music, you know, helped me with that too. Listening to a lot of music when I was younger. I, I spent a lot of time listening to a lot of off-the-wall stuff when I was younger, like Shock and Awe type metal. You know, like Slipknot and Mushroom Head and Static X and, you know, and then I slowly went into uh, punk rock and older punk rock like, you know, the Ramones, Velvet Underground, Rancid, um, Iggy and the Stooges. And then got into more of like the chaos punk style of like the casualties and the virus and stuff and defiance and just went off from there. And now I play acoustic full time. It's nice how that goes out. But yeah, no, no reason. You should never stick yourself in one genre. Everybody should love all kinds of music. I love everything. I love hip hop, newer hip hop, metal, punk, you know, even a little bit of country is starting to kick on me now. I don't know why, but... You know, a couple songs, it's not like I'm a honky-tonk, but, you know, I can see, like, what they're doing there, and I can see how hard they work and pursue it, and I do the same, so as a musician, I think it's awesome. You know, I really do, and my band is, is great, totally great. I mean, we still use a MySpace that's functional, 
uh, it has a lot of the songs that we recorded before, and we haven't we haven't moved them because we never got far enough to where we were like, we're gonna get really big, guys. But you know, we had a nice a nice following, a lot of views, a lot of listens, and stuff. But that is on myspacecom slash lies. We love it. You can check that out. We're on Facebook too, uh, and then we have a couple of videos on YouTube, so you can check it out then. And uh, I don't know, like. I guess when I was in a band and when I when I started off in a metal band, you know, is when I started to get most of these and all of this and everything else, and you know, people were like, what are, "How how are you gonna feel about them when you're 80?" And I was like, "You know, man, I'm trying to live for now." And I think that's what tattoos are. They're they're everything for now. Like you get them for right now. You could be tired of them in five years. Like the fad could drop out for whatever music scene you're in, and you'll be like, "Shit, you know, what am I gonna do?" I mean, this one's for my grandmother, but I didn't place it right. And this one's my family crest, but I put it too open for people to see it. And now you're trying to go off into the world and be a professional and people aren't taking you seriously. You know, because you just, you know, look like a felon to them or whatever. And maybe they're inappropriate. You know, I don't know. But isn't that why people get them? Because it's, you know, the, it's the different, the different thing these days. I mean, it's, but it's getting more accepted more and more every day. I mean, it's not, it, it wasn't the norm, but now it is, so, like, everybody has them, and, you know, I have a really great job, and I have tattoos, and, you know, I guess it's, it's all right, you know, it's good. I mean, my biggest thing I always wanted to do was make it big in a band, but obviously I'm not going to do that, so, I don't know, but I, th I think that everybody, regardless, should be happy with themselves all the time, fucking never settle for less, always push yourself, even when you're fucking tired, you're beat down, you feel like shit at work, you know what I mean? just know that shit could be so much worse, dude. It could be so much worse. Like, even if you're at your friend's house and, you know, you're sleeping in a spare bedroom that his parents let you stay in or you're staying at some friend's apartment and they're like, dude, come on, you know, you got to do something. Like, you know, just always push. Always push harder. You have to. Because the, the end result is amazing. It's the greatest feeling in the world. I've hit so many pits of despair. I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. I've let my parents down, my friends down, you know. But now... I'm doing good, you know, finally, like, finally I've found my niche and things that I want to do, so I'm really, really happy about that, and, it, you know, fuck everybody's opinion on you and what you're doing, fuck them, it has nothing to do with them, they're not going to pay your bills, your friends are not going to pay your bills, you know, your parents can't wipe your ass forever, it's all about you, you have to do it, you know, so just do you and be happy all the time, like, I get covered in tattoos, I get weird looks for them most of the time, I think it's because of the volume that I have them in, you know, when people think, you know, you only see that shit on MTV or something, and then, you know, I show up to these different, uh, you know, different functions with my family or my girlfriend, and they're like, the fuck? <laughs> you know, it's really bad, but um, I think for I think for the most part, like, it's, it's, it is becoming a norm, and it's getting better, and, you know, but whatever. But either way, you know, for the people out there ready to give up, don't do it. Stay strong. Be happy. Keep your fucking head up. I mean, I've lived in so many fucking places. I've met so many amazing people, amazing people, you know. Um, Pennsylvania, fucking fantastic. When it comes to the music scene, holy shit. Oh, my God, so good. I mean, like, I used to play guitar a little bit, you know, when I was growing up. I was in this little band for a little while. Um, and we were going to play at the same venue that Motionless and White played at. And, and they're big, and they're really good. And uh, I met the lead singer, well, the whole band a few times, but, you know, the lead singer was nice, and, you know, the whole metal scene's great down, or up there, and, you know, the indie scene's good, like, uh, they used to have this band, Foa Chai, I think it's Rob Lately now, and that's really good, and uh, just that, the whole scene, everybody around there in uh, NEPA, over by Hazleton, wilkes Bear is just phenomenal, great people, I love them, and, uh, you know, upstate New York, that's where I'm from, I love you guys, you know, I always, always keep it close. <laughs> But, yeah, it's really cool. And uh, I don't know. That's pretty much all I have. So thank you for listening to my almost 10-minute rant about life. And uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Post up a video every Saturday from now on. That's what I'm going to do. So it's up to you if you want to listen. But I guess I'll talk to you guys later. All right? I love you. Thanks.